So I'm going to talk to you about something that sort of lays the groundwork for what we, why we want to be interested in something like, uh, like Vivier, and that's defocus curves and understanding how our implants work. Our mission as cataract surgeons, of course, is to help our patients determine where in their daily lives they want to see without spectacle, spectacle correction. And we want to maximize the quality of vision in the zones that matter most to our patients in their daily lives. So we're juggling three parameters with our premium IOLs. We're juggling depth of focus, clarity, or, or the quality of vision, and dysphotopsia. And when we talk about depth of focus, there are a lot of ways we measure it in clinical trials. We can, it's, or other ways we can do it in the lab on an optical bench. We can do it in the clinic by adding minus lenses. That's the classic defocus curve, which will be the curves I'm showing you. Um, it can be done by measuring acuity and tasks, such as reading speed uh, at various given distances. This is the kind of early pattern of defocus curves we got with the original multifocal, really, bifocal IOLs, the four diopter uh, with a very good near vision at minus three, but very low in the intermediate. And then uh, in this particular series from uh, J and J, they went to the 3.25 and the 2.75, a little less at near and a little more toward the intermediate range. And then uh, as a sort of response to this, uh, to this issue of the, of the gap, for example, here's what Alcon came up with. They went from a four diopter to a three diopter, and then they went to the 2.5 diopter, which gave a little bit more at intermediate. Not a lot, but some compared to the three. And of course, the question is, you know, what's the, why would a patient be interested in that uh, with less depth of focus and, and a little bit more intermediate? Well, the reason is less glare. So it's the trade-off that we're looking at as this technology evolves. Here's another defocus curve. Uh, this is a monofocal IOL, this is the Restore 2.5, and this is the ex an extended de depth of focus, this is the Symphony. So again, you can see different patterns, different strengths, and then this would be a classic 3 diopter multifocal IOL uh, as we compare these. And to kind of expand this further, as the technology evolved, we went from the multifocal IOL, which in this case, would be represented by the M plus, which has the dip here in the intermediate. We went to the extended depth of focus lenses. This is a symphony. And then we have uh, a lens. This is the uh, panoptics, for example, that is stronger in some of the minus two in that particular intermediate range. So our choices have expanded tremendously with our various lens implants. And so um, this is just sort of one sort of representative slide that shows the transition that's taken place between multifocal or really bifocal lenses, good distance and good near, to EDOF designs that don't have as much uh, near uh, and they're being expanded. There's a new symphony that's, that's out, um, but strength at the distance and the intermediate um, with a certain unique pattern of dysphotopsia and maybe in some instances a little less dysphotopsia. And then we went to the trifocal lenses, which have a, a much flatter curve here in this intermediate range, which has been a tremendous advance. And if we sort of then kind of combine the EDOF and the trifocal, what we have, and this is the 2025 line here, you can see that the EDOF, a little better at distance, a little better at intermediate, but the beauty of the trifocal is it's solid all the way across. And all of these lenses will have different patterns of glare. And uh, the question of course becomes, why not use the trifocals for everybody? Well, one of the reasons would be image quality. And this is a uh, bench data courtesy of Dan Chang with corneal spherical aberration in this particular model of 0.27 and the image quality here with the monofocal and with the EDOF is a little bit higher than multifocal and trifocal. So there is a trade-off and it's important in our patient selection process. Uh, and then of course, we have dysphotopsias. Patients coming in with drawings that look like this or like this in emails and phone calls to match um, with a wide range of complaints. So in conclusion, um, the depth of focus curves predict the IOL focal performance, and every IOL has a unique performance in terms of its strengths from a focal point, um, and we need to know that. Um, Vivior will help our 
determine the focal regions of greatest importance to our patients. And then we can then use this information from Vivior to select the IOL that hits the zones that's most important to those patients. And our patients will be much more likely to accept any uh, reduction in quality, even if it's modest, or any dysphotopsia, if we're able to provide them with a, with a vision they need at the focal point that they need. And so I will turn this over to uh, Island. Thank you.